Hello and welcome on this beautiful, sunny Sunday afternoon. Thank you for joining me. Today is our cut paper painting tutorial, and I am so excited to bring this to you, to show you how to do this. It's one of my favorite, favorite things, and I hope you will love it too. Um, here is one example of a cut paper painting. It's uh, something I did a number of years ago. It's based on the still life, which we talked about last week. Things that stay still when we put them there from our lives, things that bring us enjoyment. Uh, so we can see a bottle, some oranges, a bucket, there's a plant, uh, a background, and a table. And uh, last week we looked at Janet Fish, her still life oil paintings, and one of the things we talked about was the sense of light in her paintings. So uh, not only uh, does uh, a cut paper painting like this have the basic shapes, it does its best to convey a sense of light. So the light on top of the oranges, the light hitting the bottle, uh, the light on the leaves, some of the leaves are in shadow. Through the years, I've done a number of these, and uh, I do them with flowers quite a bit. So here are a couple, oh, here, a couple flower ones that I've done. This was for Scythia, which we're gonna see fairly soon in a vase, and hopefully you can recognize tulips in a vase. Uh, loads of fun to do. If we're gonna talk about cut paper painting, we have to talk about Henri Matisse, and I'm going to introduce you to Henri Matisse. He was a French artist uh, working in the first half of the 1900s, so over 100 years ago. Now, here's a self-portrait that Henri Matisse uh, did. One of the wonderful things about this artist, and in my opinion, one of the greatest artists ever, is he never did what everyone else did, and he was never satisfied to do the same thing. He was always creating something new. The beginning of his career was somewhat traditional like this, and then one day, probably over a period of time he came to this, he went outside, he painted a landscape, and instead of painting it exactly the way he saw it, he invented the colors. Um, and he created these vibrant paintings nobody had ever seen before with these bright invented colors. And he received a lot of criticism at the time for doing this, but soon all the other artists were imitating him. As I say, his paintings, uh, he was an innovator. So as he grew and as he developed, his paintings retained color that was not necessarily observed, but some recognizable shapes. So in this, we can recognize an open window, some plant shapes, uh, ch some chairs. Can you see the cat way down in the corner? And that might be another cat or possibly a dog. So he walked this line between things looking just as we see them and this brilliant, bold invention. Now, towards the end of his life, and the reason uh, we are um, showing you him, he, he worked with colored paper and he would create these beautiful cut paper designs, um, sometimes as designs for windows. So these cut paper paintings were actually designs for windows in a cathedral. And I'll show you a few more. Aren't these beautiful? I love these, one of my favorites right there. Big, bold, bright, fun to look at. Here, this has got to be my favorite right there. Love that. Now, it's not like he just woke up one day and wanted to be a cut paper painter. Um, circumstance, uh, sort of led him there. He, he was not well at the end of his life. And uh, at times he was unable to get out of bed. And he had a long, so this is him in bed. 
he had a long pole with some chalk on the end and he would draw right on the wall. And he would also cut out shapes and glue them right to the wall. Let's see if I can find it. And that's how he created these beautiful, groundbreaking works of art that have influenced artists to this day. So when we do a, a project like this, we really owe a lot to this artist, uh, Henri Matisse. So I, I hope if you have a chance, you'll look up Henri Matisse. I wanna show you the work of one more artist who Matisse definitely in, influenced. Her name is Miriam Shapiro. Uh, now the name of this book is Rondo, and it means dance. And uh, she was an American artist uh, working until the early part of this century. I want you to see what she created. This is all, these dancers are all cut paper. And some of them, uh, more clearly, you can see the pieces of, of paper. Here's one of my favorites, a uh, dancing artist right there uh, with his palette and his hat, his long hair and his paintbrush. Um, I like the shoes too. And here you can see the pieces of paper, sort of a puppet-like figure. Here's a, a dancer. I'm gonna show you all of these. Now, so not only does she create a sense of movement with the cut paper, with the figures, she creates a sense of movement with her book, which unfolds like a dance. Isn't this wonderful? And I'd like to show you a few more, if I could, on the back. There's a couple things I want to show you, and then we're going to start. So on the back of these, she has made some uh, wonderful uh, cut paper paintings. And this one here, it's a vase of tulips. And it reminds me of uh, a photo uh, uh, someone posted uh, this week who took the workshop last week and did a painting of tulips. And I would love to see you try that painting of tulips with cut paper. Now you'll notice down here, um, she, she used some fabric. So that's, it, that is wonder, wonderful. We're gonna talk about that for just a moment. Um, so another word when we work with cut paper and different types of scraps and things is collage. Now, um, Miriam Shapiro was a, a feminist. She, she was a worker for women's rights. So she called this femage. And if you get a chance to look up uh, Miriam uh, Shapiro, uh, I, think it, I, I think you'll enjoy her work as well. So uh, I'm gonna put this over here. Um, so, so far we've talked about Henri Matisse. He's sort of the man who gave us the permission um, to work like this. And then Miriam Shapiro, who really took that uh, permission and uh, created a sense of movement and a beautiful book and wonderful works of art. Now, in our art kits uh, for the color paper, we, we have these packs of construction paper. Now, one pack, um, a lot of kids can use one pack because it repeats. Um, it repeats from black to red with all these colors in between. And, and there's maybe eight repeats in a pack. The thing about this paper is, uh, it's an inexpensive paper, and if you do something you really love, it's probably a good idea to keep it out of the sunshine, um, and if we frame it, to uh, put it under museum glass, because sunlight will fade the colors quickly. But it's fun, particularly for kids, uh, to work with this. But every artist has a scrapbook, and uh, uh, excuse me, a scrap box. And I'm willing to bet a lot of uh, a lot of the kids out there also have a scrap box. This is one of my scrap boxes, and in it go uh, scraps from things that just didn't make it into a finished product. Uh, you, you know, interesting shapes of color, remnants of prints and paintings. Um, this is fun. That you never know when when we're going to need our scrap from our scrap box, and so. If you don't have a scrap box, this is gonna be a wonderful opportunity to, to start one with, with bits of scraps and colors that are left over. I recommend everybody should have a scrap box. 
I want to talk a little bit about the papers used that Miriam Shapiro and Matisse used. Um, Matisse used uh, Pantone type papers, which you can buy. Uh, the color is more permanent, and you can really, you, in, and in quite large sheets, uh, these colors can be bought. Um, and and, it, and they, 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 that's one way to go. Now, what Miriam Shapiro did, <coughs> and what I do as well, uh, is I'll take, uh, if there's paint left over from painting in these uh, acrylic, it's just paint, and, and Miriam would, is like she created her palette, she would paint sheets of paper with acrylic paint and get uh, a much more uh, bold and, and, and vibrant uh, colors uh, than, than the construction paper. Although, I'm gonna show you how, how to get even more vibrant colors than this. Uh, uh, and I'm not gonna resort to my scrap box. So we're gonna make it so we can all do it. Uh, and another thing that uh, Miriam Shapiro does and that I do as well, uh, I do some silk screening. Now, I'm, I'm not going to bore you with the whole thing, but silk screen, sometimes artists, uh, this is called a silk screen, this is a squeegee. Um, you put your ink your, in there and you run this onto a piece of paper and voila, you have a silk screen. Uh, it's a, it, let's say you have ink left over at the end of working. Um, what Miriam did is she silk screened the color and all she ends up is with color. And again, for wonderful for our cut paper painting. So, I've talked with you quite a bit. I'd like to show you the project. Uh, today we're going to work from this still life. You can see the sun streaming in. The, uh, in the art kits, uh, th this is a watercolor uh, paper and it's it's a bit sturdy it, it has and it's going to serve as the backer what we're going to glue on um, also since there isn't um, a clean bright white in our construction um, we're also going to use one sheet whenever I want to use a white uh, in addition to these other colors I have I'll have black and I'll have white um, one thing I noticed about these um, eight packs of crayons, which were in the earlier art kits, is that it doesn't have a white, so we really need a white. Uh, so, we've got our scissors, we've got our glue, and let's get started. So, you may remember last week we talked about a viewfinder. I'm going to do a horizontal format I'm going to make my viewfinder the same shape as my piece of paper, and I'm going to figure out, and, and if you look through, you can sort of see what it looks like when you look through the viewfinder, how you can block lots of things out and determine our composition. So that's the first thing we're going to do. Uh, as you may recall, this is also a wonderful viewfinder, and I can do a lot with that. Now, one of the things to think about here, and we're working with these various shapes, is notice the highest point of the objects we're looking at. So this is the highest. So this bottle is going to be the highest point in our composition in terms of the objects. Um, there may be space above it, but all the other objects will be lower. See how this is lower than this? It comes to about right there. This is lower than this, this, and this. Let's see. This will be a little bit higher. This is lower. These are the lowest. And then the lowest point, if they're in my picture, is right here. So that's one of the first things I notice. The different heights. I notice my shapes, and I notice the heights that they're at. The other thing I notice is the distance between objects. So there's a space here, there's an overlap right here, a definite overlap right here, there's a space right there. I'm not sure I'm going to get all of this into my composition. Um, and um, 
So that's two things, heights and then spaces between objects. All right, a couple technical things now when doing a cut paper project. Uh, we have the glue. Now what I use is, what I do is I open the glue and I, um, I pour the glue uh, into a cup. Not, not all of it, but uh, in, uh, like that. And I'm going to use a brush uh, to uh, apply it with. And again, another wonderful use for coated paper plates. I'm actually going to use that as my surface uh, that I put the piece of paper on. Um, I want to back up one minute and talk about the still life. Uh, I'm aware last week, and I, I didn't think about this, is that uh, many uh, people try to work from the same still life, which you're welcome to do, but I also want to encourage you to find items that you like, to find places, notice where in your homes the light comes in, and see if you can set up a still life. I think there's a lot of value in that. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to help you. Uh, and because I think it is a challenge with, with things moving around to work from uh, this uh, still life. But uh, all right, so I poured the glue out in here. I have my scissors. I have a pencil if I need it. I have my plate. I've got my brush. Uh, okay, how do I start? I've talked about the different height. I've talked about the spaces. I am going to work, it's very helpful in this project to work from back to front. So what I mean by that, if I were to cut out the shape of an orange and put it right there, it's very help, um, it's more of a challenge then to then cut out a bottle and put it behind it and then put a table behind that and then a window and an outside. Um, what, what I'm going to do is work from the outside and work forward. So, to do that, I am going to start by choosing my background situation. So, the sun is bright. Um, again, colors are not exact. That's a wonderful thing about cut paper. It, it sort of uh, limits what we are able uh, to do. And... I'm going to, um, uh, basically, for the next several minutes, um, I'm going to work. And, um, and I, I, hope, I hope you can find, uh, find it helpful. Now, don't worry if something goes off the paper or something like that. It's not a problem. Okay, I'm going to start with that. I'm going to lay it on my um, uh, paper plate. I'm going to take my brush and my glue, and I'm going to brush the glue on like this. And then I'm going to brush it on like this. That. Now, you'll notice if you look very close, I got some glue on the paper. Not to worry, the other thing I, I have handy when I do this project is uh, I like to use warm water. Uh, a cup with some warm water, although cool water will work. I have my paper towels. I'm going to wet my paper towels just a little bit. And this is a water-soluble glue. I don't, I don't do it real hard because the paper won't stand a whole lot of rubbing with water, but that will be certainly adequate right there. I'm going to see if I can create the window frame. Uh, now, it'd be wonderful to create the light on the window frame, but let me see. I believe I have a piece of brown paper here. So, I'm going to do this. Yeah. 
other thing about cut paper painting, it, it takes some time. Um, I don't want you uh, to feel that you have to rush. And I, I know that you're washing, so I, I do feel the pressure to, to speed it up and to, to, to keep things moving. But really, uh, I have spent an entire winter doing nothing but cut paper paintings. And, uh, you know, ending up with maybe two or three of them. And, because um, I, I do them large sometimes. And that's just how they are. It's uh, If right now, if we have the time, take your time and, and really enjoy this. And, and uh, I, I, I hope you enjoy it. So what I'm doing here is creating my window frame. And, I might leave that go off the page just like that. I kind of like that. Now, let's see. I think what I'm going to do is take this right here. What I'm doing is Give myself an indication of where the paper is so I don't do a humongous sheet. And uh, it doesn't need to be perfectly straight. It's, I mean, it is a tablecloth. Um, So what I've done here is I've worked from very far back out the window to the window sill to the tablecloth. So from back to front, and I'll keep doing that. Um, clean this up a little bit. Now, for your older kids, I wanna show you um, a very useful tool. It's called a bone folder. Um, and it's very useful for smoothing out things like this when you're working with paper and glue. And uh, Certainly not um, uh, required, but a useful tool if you find you really enjoy this and want to do a lot of it. You don't regret having one of those. Um, now, let me see. You know what I'd like to do, if possible, is create that sense of light on that windowsill. Can you see that over there? So let me find this right here. It's sort of a, it's not my brightest bright, but it might create, and it's not really yellow the way that is, but I think it will be fun if I can do it. Properly. Put it in. Right there, like that, and I know, I know, I know. Let me just see if I can make it a little bit more narrow. Um, another thing, uh, and again, this is for the older kids, uh, a useful uh, thing to have is a, a cutting pad and an X-Acto knife, or uh, anything with a blade where for thin and delicate shapes, um, if, you, if you do it like that, that can be useful, uh, but again, not required. Uh, we can get quite a bit done with the tools that we have. So I'm gonna put that right there, and I think I have a little piece of that somewhere. Uh, oops. Oh, I 
do a new AF focus. Okay, so that is the light. Now, all right. Okay, so I love the blues. I love the way the light is hitting those blues. I love that deep, deep, deep blue. Now, this is where uh, I'd be tempted to go to my uh, scrap box and, and see if I can find a more vibrant blue. And that's, I'm sure somewhere in there I have it. But I've got it right here too. Do you see how uh, I used the blue paper that was provided me in this uh, to um, I used it on the tablecloth, so it won't be as interesting if the bottles are the same color. You see how much darker, even though the light's coming through them, how much darker the bottles are than the tablecloth? So, this is what I'm going to do. And this is what you guys can do, too. Take your crayon, take your blue crayon, uh, and this is what I'm going to do. I'm gonna make much more interesting blue. All right, there's there's one, and I'll tell you what you can get. You can get as creative as you want. Let's say you like that, but you're not 100% satisfied. Well, you can take another crayon. You want a different type of blue? Look at that. I think a, I think a color like that. This is my purple crayon. I think a color like that will work really nice. So, after I've done that, and remember, this bottle is the tallest point of... Uh... Now, you notice what I haven't done. And um, you can do this if you want. I have not done a perfect drawing, because uh, rules are meant to be broken and pencil drawings are just going to go by the wayside. I am painting with cut paper, so I'm creating as I go. It's a much more fun way of working here. So uh, I'm going to cut out my bottle shape. Now, I'm not saying never do a drawing and you will have great success if you do a drawing, and, and please uh, be my guest to do that. Now, I'm gonna place this. Oh, I like that, I like that. Now, sometimes I'll cut out my shapes and lay everything out and then do my gluing. <clears throat> sometimes I get lucky and I put it almost exactly where I want it, and I like it. So, that is what I'm going to do. I am going to glue this down. The, the problem, uh, particularly if I'm working outside in laying everything out uh, before I uh, glue it down, is that wind can come up or something can happen and then everything just goes all over the place and it can be a source of frustration. So before I glue this down, I'm gonna make sure I have this situation the way I want it. So. Um, I'm going to go for that bottle on the end. Uh, I'm not happy that, with this uh, brown, so again, I'm going to find, I am going to find, let's see what, I'm going to go for brown and black and see if I can make a stronger color here. Ooh, that's nice. That's a nice brown. And I'm gonna take my brack and just see if I can darken it just a little bit, a little darker brown. This is such a fun project. I love this. So, now, remember we talked about height? This brown bottle on the end is the uh, second highest thing. So it's lower than the blue bottle. So then the bottle comes to about right here. So I have the height of it about right. But um, 
but actually we're going to put it over here towards the end. So, all right, so we're going to do that. We're going to eh, give it a little more. No, I was right the first time. Okay. Uh, cut out my bottle shape. that too and put it way over here in the end oh I like that I like that okay so this is what I'm going to do uh, I'm going to glue the blue bottle down now this is where a pencil can come in handy I'm going to kind of mark where the see how it's behind it where that corner is and I'll kind of put a mark there so that when I pick it up I know where to put it down and uh, if it's not exact not the end of the world. So, like that, like wood. There's my upper corner, which I'm going to cover so you can't see it. Like that. Like that. Oh, I like that. Okay. And then just clean up here a little bit. There. And then. Is gonna go. Before I glue this down, I'm gonna, I'm going to, uh, I am going to cut out that blue bottle. Now, this is sort of a trickier shape. So what I might do is I might take my pencil and see if I can. So I just give a rough shape of what I'm cutting here. So what I'm going to do is just sort of I'm going to start right there. And actually, I don't think it goes that high. I'm going to go like this. And I'm going to go like that. And I'm going to go like that. And then. And again, part of the pleasure of these are all the accidents and the mistakes that happen. If you can call them mistakes, we're not talking perfect. Now that's huge. That's like way too big. So I'm going to, and that's not really a particularly uh, mistake that I want. So notice, like on that bottle, do you see how I cut that flat? And you see how that bottle is at an angle? So I'm going to cut that at an angle. And I'm going to see, using the same piece, if I can make my bottle smaller. It's actually, um, it's called a water jug. It's a Blanco water jug. That's what they call it. Now, let's try that. Let's see how that looks. It's still a little bit big. And I got that wonky kind of top. If I move this over, and I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. show you guys something. All right, well, I am going to go with it. I'm going to take it. So I'm going to put this right here, and I'm going to put this a couple marks of where to put it, and then I'm going to glue it. Put it down there. So, Put that right there. 
Put that right there. And I'm gonna see if I can create, I'm just gonna keep playing here a little bit. Ah, I like that. I like it, like it, like it. So I'm going to do that right there, do that right there. I'm gonna cut this right here. So a lot of cut paper painting involves playing, playing with your scraps, playing with your shapes and, and uh, not giving up. Just saying, oh, I didn't cut it perfect. Oh, darn. Now that is a beautiful water job. I like it. Um, now, let's see if I got this where I want it. Okay, we're gonna put him way over here on the end. And no, no, he comes up here like that. Actually, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see what we're gonna do here. We'll do it right down here. All right, so we're gonna make a mark here. We're gonna make a mark here. forgot something before I go on uh, as I say I'm working from back to front so uh, before I go down here I want the cork I really like that cork and we need that cork to create a little more height That's gonna be my cork. So we're gonna put that right there. And I'm gonna do one more thing up here before I go forward. Do you see that light on top of the cork? I can do that. I can do that. So what we're gonna do. Before I put on the glue, I, you, know, you notice how I tend to check things out, see if they're gonna work. A little tricky though, when your hands start to get covered with glue, everything wants to stick. I think that's pretty cool. Except, uh, let's do it like this. No, let's do this. I got another idea here. Uh, we're gonna curve the bottom of it a little bit. All right, and I'm going to get some glue on there. There. All right, I like that. Okay, there's light on top of my cork. And now, before I go down here, really love that cup. Now, this is a situation where I am not happy with this orange. It's just, well, actually, that, I do like that orange, um, but that's not what came with the kit. Uh, this orange right here is what came with the kit. So, I am going to make a better orange. Also, I'm going to take my red crayon because there's parts of it like that. Oh, I like that. All right. So now, let's see.
Notice how that gobble overlaps. Now before I glue it down, I'm going to see about the rest of it. Now, hmm, let's see. I'm going for the white. It's, uh, it's that watercolor I put in the, with the pack to give us a white. Let's see how we do it. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do this. Oh, we'll try this first. Let's see. I do like that, but before I glue that down, I'm gonna check out, no, that won't work. I like that, I like it, like it, except I'm gonna make this go on top of that, like that, I think. Yes, that's how I'm gonna do it. And do I like the placement of it? I do. So I'm gonna do the, uh, the stem first. I'm gonna make a mark here and make a mark here. Oops, not on my paper. Um, Put some glue on my orange. And okay, do about like that right there. There's my goblet. I love it. Okay. Let's see, let me, uh, before I go on and uh, do all this, I want to come down and um, make it. I, really, I love those oranges, so I'm going to, again, I want a more vibrant orange. Um, so I'm going to do orange only without the red this time. Now, remember I said it's okay for things. Oops, it's like I'm glue into the paper bag. Let's see if I can stop that. And then I'm going to come out. Up, 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 up. Right, 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 right. Okay. Okay. Um, it's okay to have things that go off. And I like how those oranges go off. So actually, my first orange, um, big one, is going to go. First one, I'm just gonna glue, I'm gonna let that go off just because I like it that way. And it's low, it's down here. So we're gonna put this one here, and I'm gonna put glue on just the end of it. Then I'm gonna cut a smaller orange, it's actually a tangerine. I'm gonna put that on top. And that's going to go over here. Okay, I'll make sure I'm not gluing it to my backer there. Now, I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make another orange. 
using just to create a little difference. I'm going to use the actual the orange of the paper in this case. And I'm going to put that right there. See how it creates a little variation? Like there's light going on there. Um, Good. And good. Got some shadow. Now, do I want to put some shadow there? No. I think I want to do some uh, some apples. But all right. So now this is the color I use for up here. But let's see if it'll work for those yellow apples. Let's see if I can still use the same color. First one, oops, now before I get this glued, I may just put it on there and see if I want them a little bigger. Let's bring it down lower though. There, I like that even better. I'm glad I didn't just start gluing. And I think I'll add a thing of shadow too, but let me get this glued in here. So I'm gonna start with this one. And again, the, they're, uh, like, it's easiest if we can remember to work from the back and work our way forward. Although it's not an instant dry glue, and you've, you've probably noticed places where I have been able to peel things up a little bit and slip, slip a piece of paper behind something else, but if we can work from back to front on this, uh, I, think, I think we'll have a better chance of a successful outcome. down and before I forget it, let's do it like that. Let's see if I want to create a sense of shadow here. So let's go with that uh, brown paper again. Try the brown. See, I might actually try the green, but let's see how this works. Uh, it's too big. try one other thing. Take this. Well, let's just try it without anything. So a lot of cut, actually any art making, um, it's particularly evident in this project, is decision making. Uh, I think we have this art notion uh, at least I did when I started, that 
artists know exactly what they're doing and it just flows out of them and and uh, if you don't know exactly what you're doing um, you're not an artist uh, art making is a lot about decision making um, and it's not all pre uh, that's so boring that's that's why I, I don't do a perfect drawing and then fill in the, the blanks it's really I'm going to see if I can alter this color a little bit. I'd like to create a sense of shadow, but if I don't get it, it won't be the end of the world because I kind of like the shapes just as they are. And I'm not sure what the colors I have available, but let's see if, uh, let's see what this is. A little bit of blue on the green paper. Very lightly, I didn't do a heavy crayon altered it a little bit. Not bad, but what if I did this instead? What if I took my yellow crayon? Okay, so let me get this glued down. Again, I hope that everybody watching will love doing this project as much as I do. What a wonderful gift this time that we have right now is, where we can do things like this. So, there's lots and lots and lots to be th thankful for right now. Now, ooh, I like this, like this, like this. Okay, if you are still with me and uh, I'm going to move on to that green bottle. So, let me press this down a little bit. All right, now, I love the color of that green, so I'm gonna start with this green uh, paper, but I'm gonna see, I'm gonna be a little more uh, strenuous with this blue. Well, that just turned it blue, I don't like that. Let's see what happens if I go with the purple. Ooh, that's kind of nice. I like that. All right, let's see if I find that yellow crayon. Let's see if I can bring this back a little bit. That might be it right there. Okay, that is gonna be it. All right, so. I used a blue and then a yellow crayon on top of the green paper. And then I'm going to cut this out. Now, let's see. So it starts back here and it goes a bit higher. So and it's at an angle. So I'm going to make my first cut this. Okay. And it goes 
comes up higher than the cup. And it actually, let's see, goes a tiny bit higher than the blue, so that's pretty good. Okay, and let's see, where does that start? There's a little more space right there. And it seems to start about right here and go up here and go like that. I think that is what I'm going to do. Let's try that. So, what we're going to do, I'm going to cut right here, cut right here, like that. Let's see how that looks. If I cut this there. Okay. situation but that's how it goes sometimes okay so I'm gonna make a mark here and I'll make a mark here and I'm gonna make a mark See if I can get a portion of that. Okay, so what that is going to be, I'll tell you what, instead of grabbing that, I'm going to take this piece of wood, I'm going to grab my black crayon, and see, so this I'm making sort of a blue black, whereas my other choice is, this is what they call black, but you see, you can see the difference. And what I could try to do is try to make that, but that's when I do blue on top of that. So I'm gonna go with that. And um, let's see, I'm gonna go like this a little bit. And see if I can make my ball.
the glue, the part that is on the backing, and I leave that part unglued. And bring it up to about right there. Okay, I turn it like that. Now, I don't know if I'll keep all that, but I might. Okay, now. All right, all right, all right, we're getting there. Let's see. The glue is water soluble, so tragedy averted. And uh, let's see if I can get a hint of those flowers. Um, so let's see. Uh, like that. Like it. Ooh. Uh, all right. Well, that's what I did. Okay. Ooh, I got this too. Light. Like it, like it, like it. All right. So. out before I get start gluing down anything and I'm gonna make some darker ones and some lighter ones. Uh, and again the problem when you're working small and if I get everything perfect, oh, that can be frustrating because it's hard to, it's hard to um, glue it down exact. But again, just going to do the best we can and have fun with this because this is a fun project. I hope you are enjoying this as much as I am. Necessary to hit someone over the head with a fact that it's an orgy. If I can show that it is a flower, then a flower in the foreground, then I will have been successful. So I'm going to keep playing here a little bit. See if I can somehow show that this is a flower. How about if I do this? I got this. How about if I could do this? Ah, yes. Okay. So, um, Never ever give up. That's the secret sauce right there. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Ah, maybe a leaf, sort of leaf, orchidy type leaf somewhere. Idea. I think I know kind of what I want to do here. 
So, all right, so what I'm going to do, well, that's kind of big. Let's see. All right, now before I worry about that, and before I worry about that, ah, okay, so what I'm going to do, so this is where I'm talking about how it's a little complicated when you get something you kind of like, and then you got to move it so you can glue it. So, and again, get used to it. It's not going to be exactly how you have it, but you understand now what you're doing, and by golly, you're going to do the best you can. So, I'm going to do the best I can. So, this, I'm going to pour out a little more glue. Situation right there. Alrighty, so mm -hmm. that right there, put that right there, put that. my faithful companion letting me know I have taken a great deal of people's time today Thank you for joining me for one of my favorite projects, cut paper painting. We still have uh, a few kits left, and uh, tomorrow when I uh, go in to put up the flag, uh, I'll put them out front of the studio uh, for parent self-pickup if you'd like to give this, um, give this your time and attention. So uh, thank you. Uh, have a wonderful day, and next Sunday, we're going to do something that I will announce on, on, uh, on Facebook. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Be safe. Be well. Be inspired.